Hello, this is Jason Widerow, and we are continuing on our past tutorials of creating a search box so and custom fields, etc., as we did in the earlier tutorial, so that your visitors can search for content easily on the website. So we are continuing that, and in this tutorial, I'm going to go over creating a view. And we're going to do that by going to here and clicking Views and click Add New. And I'm going to give this a title. I'm going to call it Classifies View. And you'll notice there are a lot of options on this page. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to get into pretty much everything we just need to know so we can get this up and running. And I'm going to go to Edit. And we're going to select classifieds. We're going to leave everything else as it is. Click OK to save that change. And you'll see that this is the information that we just selected here. And then we have a pagination option. I'm going to leave that to Noah's now because, again, it's a little, a little overboard for this tutorial. But just so you know, that option is there. And we're going to leave it as it is. All right, so what we're going to do now is where it gets a little, a little more technical, but again, this is for setting up our search. And the first thing we're going to do is select post search. And you recall from earlier tutorial that we talked about the title and description of the classified itself. We're using the default WordPress post title and description. So I'm going to click, select search. And what we want to do is add a search box for the visitors so they can actually enter the text that they want to search for. And I'm going to click Add Filter. All right, there we go, and that's been added. And we're going to add one more selection option. And remember those custom fields we created and we gave them slug names? And again, a slug is it, normally a slug is always doesn't have to be, but it's normally always lowercase and it's always hyphenated. And you typically see slugs like in a you know a URL, like a link, things like that to give more descriptive names to to all the funny question marks and letters and numbers that you see sometimes on websites. But that's a totally different subject. So I'm going to jump to this, and we're going to also add the category option as a selection. And this is going to be a like option and we're going to select the URL parameter and this selection basically just means that the when when you click the search button the information from this is going to be passed so that the search can actually take place I'm not going to get too much into the technical details of it but the important thing to know is that you just want to have your slug name in here because this tells us what we're actually searching for what item we're actually searching for and that's a category and uh, you'll see how this works in just a moment so we're going to click add filter for that and then for the last one we are going to actually we are going to do no those are the only two we're going to do for this tutorial to keep things rolling right along here all right so as you can see we have a search box and we have a category selection option. Now, the next thing we need to do is I'm going to click OK actually on that option because I want to save that. The next thing we're going to do is go down here and you'll see that these boxes were automatically created. And I'm just going to put these in a little better order and you can drag them by simply moving them like this by grabbing the blue dot and holding your button down there and just moving it and I want to actually have the apply okay that's that's the perfect order that I want now on this category option this is going to be a select box type and I'm going to click use existing field when showing this control so basically in the earlier tutorial you probably remember remember me entering hot rods cars and trucks and you probably remember me entering them in both fields, the title of it and the actual what's stored in the database. So what we're searching for is what's stored in the database. 
So I'm going to say use existing custom field values when showing this control. And I'm going to click OK to save that. And this search is just a text field, and this is a submit button. So we're all good on these. But one thing that's commonly forgotten and sometimes missed is these need to be checked to be enabled. So any box here that you want to show on your search form must be selected here to show up on the actual view when a visitor comes to your site. So we're going to click OK to save this change. And you'll notice a little message here saying this view has changed. You need to save for these changes to take effect. And of course, you can hit the Save button now if you like. I normally recommend saving while you're making these edits just in case you accidentally close the browser or whatever just to save the hassle in case something goes wrong. So click Save. All right. Now we're going to decide. Now just a, just a just a side note, we are going to get out of that. I'm going to close this box. I'm sorry, I'm opening up the wrong boxes here. So the next thing we want to do is select how we want this these listings presented. And I'm going to go with the table format just because it's one of, one of the ones I like more. And plus, you get the optional field table headings, which allow your user to sort by specific fields. So that comes in handy sometimes when you have listings and it's not a bad idea to use that. So what we're going to do here is add the actual field values as they're going to show up on the results page. In other words, when someone actually adds a classified or if you add one through the administrative console, they're going to be listed down the page and we're going to sort out how we want them to be listed right now. And we're going to do that by simply clicking Add Field. And we're going to go with a, the title with the link. I'm going to go with the, uh, let's say we'll put the price in there and the category. Okay, so I just selected those three. And as you can see down here, this is actually the HTML that is generated based on these selections. So if you're familiar at all with HTML, you will see that the structure here is basically how the items will be listed. So you have the link first, and then the price, and then the category. So that looks good. And basically what we're going to do at this point is leave everything as it is. Again, there's a lot more customization that can be done to this. And in later tutorials, I'm going to get it into quite a bit of detail on some of those things. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're pretty much done. And the last thing I'm going to do here is save this change by clicking Update. And my view is going to be totally saved now. And it's called Classifieds View. And it's all done and ready. And the next thing we're going to do is go on to the template pages, which is going to be the page that shows the listing once any of these titles are clicked on. Okay, thanks for watching. Looking forward to the next one.